this comes in handy. Uh, and we should not understand how to uh, interpret it. Um, so let's have a look at the table page 214. I'll just, I'll just, since it's kind of short, I'll just rewrite it here on the board and see if we can understand what it actually says. Actually, it's not that short. But <laughs> and it doesn't have everything you're going to need um, in the next homework. But it has almost everything you're going to need in the next homework. More homework? Yeah, you're going to have another homework. Two more or just one? Two more. Well, one due November 30th, and there's another one. I said I would probably have it written up today, but okay. I don't. Okay. There's a various population parameters, and this is just for single random sample. I got a little single random sample of a single variable. Okay. So the urn only, all the marbles in the urn only have one number on them. Okay. And so there, you have the marble here. Okay, this is x1, x2, little x is x3, x4, x5, and so on. Okay, you're going to count on the turn. Okay? So uh, there's no two variables here. Okay? And then we have the estimate. And what's an estimate of here? That's simply going to be x bar. Estimate of p in the case of the, uh, of the dichotomous variable. So then in the case of p hat, we're talking about all the x's are ones or zeros. Okay, and it's exactly this is a special case. The second line is a special case of the first line, actually. Where they've got it all written down. Then you have the variance of the estimate. You have the actual theory for the variance of the estimate for a simple random sample. And it's sigma squared sub x bar. That's distinct from the population parameter, sigma squared. Right? That's over here. Okay. Sigma squared is x bar. It's just a notation for the variance of x bar. I can write this as var They don't write this in the book, and I won't have it if I publish the table to you on the exam. But this, is, of course, just means the variance of x bar. Okay. And there's a formula for it sigma squared over n times the finite population factor 1 minus little n minus 1 over capital n minus 1. And then there's the and then the estimated variance. And what this is, is an unbiased estimated variance. In all of these lines, they didn't say it, but I'm going to put in parentheses, these are un all unbiased estimated variances. In other words, an unbiased estimator of this quantity, okay, of this quantity right here. This is a, a parameter, right? And I get an estimator of that parameter, and that is s squared, which that's the usual little s squared, divided by n minus 1 times 1 minus little n over capital N. And this is denoted as s squared sub x bar. So this is biased? This is unbiased. Uh, this is unbiased. You can find that in a theorem. Let's find the theorem which tells you that they actually they do not publish that theorem for this one. They publish for, I do not believe they publish this one in this book. And they do in the table only. I think it was a homework problem actually to show that this is an unbiased estimator of, of, of this quantity. Alright? But that's not that difficult to show because they do have a formula for the uh, expectation of s squared, I believe. Let's see. Well, now here it is, a corollary a, page 12 I was wrong. They do have enough. They do have it recorded. An unbiased estimate of variance x bar is this. That's right, corollary a, page 212. Okay. So, you, so you can understand this thing. I got a question. What's s squared? Is that variant of what's a little s squared? Yeah. The less squared in this chapter is the same as capital S squared in the previous chapter. <laughs> okay? Uh, so that's the, the uh, usual sample thing. standard deviation. Sample variance. Oh, sample variance. 
equals one over n minus one. You can also do the shortcut variable very, uh, open x i squared minus n x bar squared. I goes from one to n. So this is interesting quantity. This is a quantity. How do you find the s squared when they don't give you any of that stuff? How do you calculate s squared when yeah. they don't give you any of this stuff? Yeah. It doesn't give you half the stuff for you to calculate very right? Which case? I think. Which problem? Number seven. See, I got mixed up with p's and x's and all that. I don't know seven. what we're supposed to find. Previous, previous. I mean, not seven, but um, 14. Are we supposed to find the, it says find the variance. I don't know if we're supposed to find the variance of the p, sigma p, or sigma okay, x. Okay, it's exactly this. Hey, let's go to the second line here, okay? Now, let me finish what I was going to write down here from page 212. Okay. The next line is what you're asking about in this table. Not biased estimate of variance x bar. Which is this, this quantity right here. Okay. Is s squared over n minus 1. Is s, so x squared, let's say, equals s squared over n minus 1. Oh, I'm sorry, this is n here. I guess I made a mistake. I made a mistake here. s squared over n. I'm glad I put this corollary. One minus a little n over capital N. Okay? Let's make sure they got that right on page, next page, 214. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's funny because in the next... All right. All right, I understand the difference. Corollary. There it is. So you may memorize this if you want, but you can, you'll have the table. P hat, um, variance of the estimate is, um, there's a formula in terms of parameters, sigma squared of P hat equals P, one minus P over N, times the final population variance in this form, okay? This is exactly a copy of the first line where we place sigma squared by p1 minus p because that is the population variance in the case of a dichotomous variable. See? No, star. I'll just put a star here for asterisk or maybe a footnote. If all xi equals 0 or 1, then Sigma squared is equal to P1 minus P. That was written down in maybe the third page of this chapter. Okay? Where P is the population parameter. Where P is the mu equal summation XI divided by capital N. I go from 1 to capital. So you can see how the second line is an exact copy. Now what is the thing though? What is S squared in this second line? But S squared is something different. But S squared, let's see, we calculated that once upon a time, is n over n minus 1 p hat 1 minus Let's see if I can find that one for me. My memory is failing me just a little bit. I believe it's correct. Corollary D, page 212. No, that's a different thing. That's actually saying an unbiased estimate of variance we had. No, I'm actually trying to say what S squared is. Little S squared is in this situation. Calculation similar to the one you do for the population calculation, but this is a sample 
See, this is a sample variance. This is a population variance. They're almost the same looking thing, right? When little n is infinity, they look, they're, they're the same. Because the p hat becomes a p when little n equals infinity. P hat is a, po is a sample quantity. P is a population quantity. You've got to keep this differentiation throughout the whole thing. P hat, yeah, but what's, well, the thing is, what's s squared? The small s squared, isn't that popular, I mean, sample already? Yeah. Why do we still need a sample, unbiased s Sample, sample, sample. This is an unbiased estimate of sample variance. What, what do you mean, unbiased estimate? Because you, don't you already have a sample variance? Why no, 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 I'm sorry. It's an unbiased estimate of the of the of the variance of x bar. That's a different thing. What? This is the variance of x bar. That's not the sample variance. Okay, there's variance of x bar. And then it's closely related cousin, the standard error of x bar, which is its square root. Okay? Yeah. And that's totally distinct from the from the sample variance of x. S squared equals sample variance of x in parentheses. Not x bar. So s squared, is, and in this context, s squared is not even unbiased for sigma squared. We've already gone through that. Yeah, but my question: What's the difference between s and s of p hat squared? Okay. S of p hat squared is exactly this. It's exactly this with this substitution. So that's the estimated variance of the population. This is the estimated variance of the variance of p hat. Of variance? What? This is the estimate, I'm sorry. Estimated variance is not a good word. This is the estimate of the variance of p hat. Equals estimate of the variance of p hat. Okay, it's the O of P hat that you're missing, okay? Or the O of X. They're not saying of what. It's the O of clause. But what's this? Missing. Sigma squared. Isn't that an estimate of Sigma squared, of so P hat, P hat is the actual theoretical variance of P hat in terms of population parameters. It's not an estimate. It's a theoretical quantity. Wow. In other words, if you... Okay. If you actually took all the p hats you could ever get in all the world, okay, uh -huh. and calculated the variance among them, uh -huh. with the probability that each p each p hat has the same probability, namely one over capital n choose one over capital n choose little n, the number of samples you can get. That's the number of this, each p hat value has this probability. Okay, with that probability space, calculate the variance of the p hats. That's what this is. It's a formula for it. Variance of s. If I have a random, if I have a random variable on a probability space, yeah. it has a variance. Yeah. So here's my probability space. Each point has this probability. Yeah. Uh huh. Each, each time you pull a sample from the urn, you get a p hat, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's say I have five points and I pick two, okay? There's five choose two samples unordered, okay? So I get 10 p hats. And these are all zeros and ones. Mm -hmm. I get 10 p hats, each has probability one tenth. What's the variance of the p hat? How do you calculate it? Expectation of p hat squared minus expectation of p hat the quantity yeah. squared. Okay? No. Sigma squared of p hat is one tenth the sum of all the p hats that I can get squared. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh -huh. Minus? If 
divide is? The mean. Some of, some of the V hats divided by 10. Squared. Okay? Yeah. That's a quantity. Uh -huh. It's in theory, right? Because I haven't taken every possible sample size, too. It's theory. Uh -huh. This is the formula for it in terms of the actual population parameter, P. Uh -huh. Which if we knew, we wouldn't need to estimate. Right. If you knew, you wouldn't need it to estimate. And then if you knew P, you wouldn't be able to have to find a confidence in a whole form. Okay, you would just know P. Okay. But in your homework problem number 14, they told you what P was, so you can understand this theory they're talking about. They're saying the P hats that you get, the 10 P hats you get, well, here, because the sample size is small, they're not really a normal population. So we're trying to figure out what sigma of... The idea is they're a normal population of P hats, but N is little N is sufficiently large, and not too large. Here, the capital N. And tell them to plot something. What are we supposed to plot? Or like, curve. I'm not a Gaussian curve. Yeah, but like, do we supposed to plot sigma? Put at least three points on, they said. Oh. My question <laughs> is, my question is, what are we supposed to plot? Because I plot a sigma x. I guess. You know what p okay. is. Look, how do you plot n mu sigma squared? Well, I know how to do that. Okay, well that's what you have to do. Yeah, but what's You're my You're calculating sig sigma squared. So we use this sigma. is it. This is it. See, I use sigma x bar. What's the same thing? It's this is the same oh, formula. Yeah, I just scaled. With this. The substitution is the same formula. Uh -huh. And the mu is just... This is, the, this is the general case, x bar. Uh -huh. This is the special case where all the x's are 1's and zeros. That's all. Okay. I don't, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little upset because we've been over this so many times, but this chapter is a bit annoying, and it's annoying to me too. Because <laughs> probably tomorrow we'll go over and say, I can't remember any of these formulas. I mean, another week from now, it'll be like, ah, oh, it's a struggle to remember all these formulas. But in, by next January, I'll be like, eh, it's in the book somewhere. <laughs> I know where to look. <laughs> I know where to look. This is a little thing. I know where to look. <laughs> but anyway. Look at table page 214. I apologize for getting so terse about this. Um, it's a little confusing, but now I think it's good to review it at this point. Let's have a solid and iron clad. Okay, so there's this first, that's why this chapter is so great, because you learn all the terminology and a lot of statistics. Because just, you're digging I'm, through it, looking at probability I, think it is, I don't understand what the question is asking. You don't understand what the question is asking for? Okay, well, let's look at the question one more time then. Oh, well, I got it. Portion of hospitals. Let's just check well, and make sure that the question. I think he's been extremely precise, only so you have to be extremely precise with your words and terminology here. It's not because of those so many different variances. Here's where it gets funny. We he starts talking about variance of estimate, then estimated variance. He's not using the of clause. This is the variance of estimate. Variance of estimate of mu. Okay, you're uh, estimating mu. Uh -huh. This is the estimated variance of x bar. Okay. Uh, so this is. Oh, okay. This is actually. Yeah, that helps. Yeah, that helps. A little bit. Yeah, that does help. Did you want us to draw a picture for this question, or was that not necessary? For number fourteen, yeah, you were supposed to draw a picture. Put at least three points on it or something. I didn't say. I didn't no, say use at least three points, yeah. but somewhere I thought I saw that use at least three points on the graph. I don't know which problem it was. It must have been a different problem I was reading. Okay. Okay. So I think this is this might help you a little bit, but I won't change the table. But I just can't photocopy it. Okay. That's the much there in Yeah, so you're estimating the variance of x bar. Estimated variance of x bar. Put some parentheses too, so the phrase is clear. Okay, and this is the variance of the estimate of mu. Okay. But I'm not supposed to, you using x bar to estimate mu. That's the whole point of this chapter, right? Yeah, you're estimating mu with x bar. Yeah. And this is the formula for the actual variance of that estimator. That estimator is a random variable. Here's the, here's the big sample space of all this. All, all, here's the big urn. So this urn, then I get another urn of all the samples of size 2, right? X1, X2, 
three, x well, one, what's the, x four, yeah. et cetera. And there's a bunch of points that matter. Okay. But what's up with the estimate variance of x bar? Isn't the x bar is just your sample x bar? X bar is my okay. your sample, right? E, okay. E, yeah. But I have to think in theory. When I have this sigma squared, it means think of all possible samples. Uh -huh. When I have this, think of just one sample. But actually, oh. then it, it's actually saying uh, actually it's worse than that though because now. What they're saying is that the sig is that the expectation of this of the ex what they're really saying is that uh, well so what they're really saying here is that the, in this theorem is that the expectation of s squared sub x bar is equal sigma squared sub x bar okay so here in the, in this line I can also think of of uh, all the possible s squares I'll get. All the s squares and x bars I'll get through, through the s squared. Okay? Alright. And then just average them all. And I'll get this number. Okay, so it needs to be an unbiased estimate. Okay. So, normally though I don't think that. I don't think about all possible things there. But here, I'm really keyed into thinking about, you know, focus on, on this sigma squares of x bar. Okay. That's really where you constructed this other urn and now calculate the variance of x bar, which would be the average of these two numbers. Okay. So you can think of instead of this these, the space of samples, I think of the space of x bars, where I just replace each of these curly brackets by an x bar. Okay. So I'll focus on this one. This one, and then tells you, okay, how do you to um, get a nice quantity to estimate that one, okay? So that's that business, and there's the tau where you multiply everything in this line by capital N, and this is just sigma squared, uh, there's an unbiased estimator for it, and that's S squared times uh, capital uh, N over capital N minus one or something like that, or vice versa. I can't remember now which point the capital N, so I'll have to go back to page 214 to figure it out. Cheap. Okay, 1 minus 1 over capital N. So it's S squared times N minus 1 over capital N. We talked about this a little bit last time. That's unbiased for sigma squared. And you don't use this in any of your, you never use this last row, I think, <laughs> okay, in any of your problems. It's just the first two rows that are really important. Okay. Now let's get back to problem 32 where I was going to make a comment. In that problem, they want you to go through this, all these calculations, roughly speaking, and say, now suppose I have two independent estimators. This is an indi these are independent estimators. You have two urns. Right? One urn. 8,000 condominiums or whatever, another urn with 12,000 condominiums in it. I don't know, that, was that the problem with the context? 200, I think. So it's like 12,000 and 10, 200. Yeah, okay. We have 15,000 total, So you have big urns and they had 8,000 condominiums and 12,000 condominiums. 12,000, right. Okay, uh -huh. so the, the, the capital end was the size of the urn, uh -huh. okay? Uh -huh. And the little end is how many you select out. 200. Okay. Uh -huh. So then you, you actually get a fatter urn of all the possible <laughs> you get a really much bigger sample space, right? When you actually take samples. Huh? Right. I had 8,000 elements in this urn, 12,000 elements in this urn, and when I actually go to the samples, I get the size 100. How many, X, how many P hats would there be? I don't think it's 12,000. 12,200. Yeah, so there would be like oh. a really fat urn. 12,000 choose 200, uh, you know, P hats. Uh -huh. Okay, P2 hats, okay, over there. And then there's a really fat urn here where there's 8,000, choose 100, see one hats. I think I did wrong. Okay, but anyway, but these urns, I mean, the, the estimator, the P1 hat that you pull from this urn and the P2 hat that you pull from, those are independent. Ah, uh, okay. I did the problem wrong. P hat is this. 
So the variance of d hat, which would also be denoted as sigma squares of d hat, they're trying to get you to, to write another, basically, entry to this table, okay, where you've got two independent estimators. This would simply be uh, the variance of p1 hat plus the variance of p2 hat. Yeah, I but what would be an unbiased estimator of that? What would be the sigma squares of d hat? So you pull these things from that table. You would just take this line with P replaced by P1. You would take this line and little n and capital N, the corresponding little n and capital N for sample one and population one, little n one and capital N one. And then you would just add and then take this other one. Those are population fractions. So those this is all population calculation. Alright? At the population level. I think this is totally wrong. Formula. And then what, what would be the actual, what would be an unbiased estimator of d hat, though? A sigma squared, of s squared of d hat. Estimated variance? Yeah, we just add these two. Yeah. Okay. I didn't write this down. This was uh, p hat 1 minus p hat over n minus 1. You can have to plug this in here for the s squared, then times 1 minus little n over capital N. I would add these two. To get an unbiased estimator of the variance of the hat. Of variance of the hat. Okay? So this was equal to therefore P1 hat. 1 minus p1 hat over n1 minus 1 times 1 minus little n1 over capital n1 plus p2 hat 1 minus p2 hat over n2 minus 1, 1 minus little n2 over capital n2. That would be an unbiased estimate. So he called the standard error of d hat the square root of this theoretical quantity. The estimated standard error would be the square root of this. Now, another way you might do it, which is what I did when I did my homework, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference, is to actually, when I get this, it just, uh, this will depend only on P1 and P2, and the little n's and the capital N's. Uh, you could plug in the P1 hat and the P2 hat, and place a P1 and P2 there, okay, and get another uh, estimated standard error, all right? But it would be slightly different than if I took the square root of this because of these minus population correction factors and whatnot. All right. You put n2 minus 1 rather than n2 and n1. See? So there's an n minus 1 here than an n here and some other junk. So this is better, though, to take the square root of this. To take the square root of an unbiased estimator, I think, is a little bit better. It won't make any difference in terms of your confidence interval. You'll get the same confidence interval to two digits, okay? But I just point that out. This is probably preferred. Okay. And I think this is what all was looking for. Yes. So you really have to study the tables in the chapter well to get that. Uh, oh. I hope I'll get some positive results. I did this one wrong, I feel. Okay. I select the two hundred houses from S to both of them. Oh. Okay. That's, see, that's what I did wrong. That's what I did wrong. Well, I hope you're understanding this stuff now. Maybe we should go on and, and finish this ratio yeah. estimated stuff so you can do your homework for next week. Is it due Thursday or? It's due on Tuesday. Let's go through it. Let's see what, it's really, what it, it is, is, uh, <laughs> One idea and a lot of calculations from chapter four. <laughs> so maybe I'll just start with these notes 19 today. I think we've pretty much covered notes 18, um, if I'm not mistaken, from this little review. Normal approximation and confidence intervals. Yeah, we've done that. Okay. Let's talk about the ratio estimator.
And I think a really good problem to focus on is problem number, this is what we want to make the focus of the lecture, roughly speaking, is problem number 41 at page 246. And I'll just read the context of that problem. You're going to compare it. The, the idea is to come up with another estimator for um, mu. Actually, and, there, and actually they're going to come up with a couple more different estimators for mu in various contexts. So, but the, I mean, the, the basic context is that um, you have one, you have a pair of random variables, but one of the random variables is actually known in some sense. In other words, all the population values are known. All the population parameters for that variable are known. So the context is this. Context of uh, alternative and possibly better estimators of, and now I'm going to call it of mu. Okay? But now mu is going to become mu sub y in, in the context of the book. Mu is mu sub y. All right? So I'm going to call the variable, my basic variable that I want to estimate y. I'm going to estimate the population parameters for it. I'm going to call that one y. And I'm going to call my uh, auxiliary variable x. So it's going to go from x to y, and then use x as the auxiliary variable. Okay, this is going to be one variable. I'm going to have variable y, variable of interest, and variable x, auxiliary variable. How do you do auxiliary? Is there another i in auxiliary? I think so. Auxiliary. <laughs> is that right? No. Yeah, that's right. It looks good. Is it? No, oh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> I, can't spell. I can usually spell anything. I play all right, those works here. Okay. Yeah, spell check. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can check it. Okay. Um, Once one L, dang. <laughs> only one L. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> Is that right? You sure? <laughs> if with two L's, it gives me a red underline. <laughs> they suggest one L. <laughs> Bill Gates. Uh, <laughs> oh well. Probably. Anyway, I'll look it up in this book. Anyway, um, something fishy. About this. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, I know. Maybe two L's in on is too much. Maybe this is right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> get past this. Yeah, we'll get past this. Okay, so this is very much So what am I thinking of? In your, let's look at example problem 41, 741. Let's see what we're talking about. And then there's also the hospital data. So they're also talking about things there. And I mentioned this at the very end of the hour last time. In 741, what you have is some kind of auditing situation, an accounting and auditing, and following sampling methods sometimes used to estimate a population total. You have an inventory to a whole bunch of things, like I said, like huge parking lot full of vehicles, okay? A book value exists for each item. Okay. So you know how much his book value is. And there's some, you know, so like a car? You know, yeah, you know its age and its make and blah, blah, blah. You know, you know its VIN number and its, its data, whatever. You don't know anything about the history of the automobile. Nothing. All you know is that. And so that gives you a book book value, assuming that it's still, you know, in operation as a misjunct. Okay? There's a book value for that vehicle. <clears throat> and then, of course, then there's the audited value. Okay? So maybe this, all these cars in this parking lot are really high quality, you know, they've all been, you know, very carefully tended and so on and so forth. Or maybe not. Uh, I mean, there's various different kinds of parking lots, right? Out there. <laughs> You know, work the quality of the, of the of the inventory is a measure of quality. Somehow, that would be the total value of all the vehicles there, or the 
value per vehicle, and so on. So you can imagine. Now, and of course, you can do this in, in various contexts. They could be talking about uh, other types of inventory, not just kinds of vehicles. But that's the one we kind of can relate to, maybe. So you have an auxiliary variable. That is the book value. Mm -hmm. OK? The variable of interest, that's the audit value. And what you're interested in is you're estimating the total value of the inventory, not just the book value. That's trivial. So you just have the book value for every automobile. It would be like pushing one button, assuming the data was there. OK? That's trivial. What I want is uh, estimate mu y or tiles of y equals capital N times mu y, just the total inventory value. Mm -hmm. OK? context. Total inventory audited value. So that the actual true value what you could actually get. Basically you want to okay. like ten cars and estimate the whole parking lot? Is that what yeah. this is about? Yeah. Not ten. Yeah. You're gonna randomly sample some vehicles from the lot. Okay by whatever method. My computer probably going to go out and find them, okay? And actually examine the vehicles. And come up with audited values. And you have to examine all the records, blah, blah, blah. And figure out how much a vehicle is actually worth. Then how would you come up with an estimator for the total based on that? How would you use the auxiliary variable? Okay? Well, there's three methods proposed. Just forget about the auxiliary variable. And just do, uh, so there's Y bar. Okay? Equals n y bar. Okay? I'm sorry, not n bar, uh, tau bar. Not bar, uh, tau hat, I guess is what they call it. Okay? Would be one. What's the difference the between tau y and mu y? Tau is just capital N times mu. It's just the total. In other words, if I have the summation, summation y i, here's all the audited values. i goes from one to capital N. That's equal to the average of all the audited values. That's mu times capital N. All right? Yeah. So the relationship between mu and tau is trivial. It's mu times capital N. This is tau. OK. All right? If there's 1,000 vehicles, so tau is the and total. average value per vehicle is 5,000, then the total inventory is 5 million. Okay? So it is. 5 million. 5 million dollars. Okay? Okay. So you just multiply y bar without doing, don't use x at all. Okay? Another possibility is uh, what we're going to work with is a ratio estimator. You're going to know all, all population parameters, all. Uh, let's see, what you can assume is that mu x uh, tau x equals n mu x, and even sigma squares of x are all known about this auxiliary variable. Okay, everything you want to know about that variable is known. But the sample values of the variable are not known ahead of time. You don't know what the sample is going to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> you only know after the fact. Of course, but you know after the fact for y as well, but the sample values. Okay. But then you can still do this. You can do, we can do the following. Tau hat is tau sub x times y bar over x bar. This is called a ratio estimator. This is unbiased for tau sub so y. I'll put the y here, OK? Why is that unbiased? Oh, no, it's not unbiased. Actually, it's because it's, it's asymptotic. It's not unbiased. This is biased, actually. That's but it's an estimator. This is biased for tau sub y. But it's still asymptotically unbiased. In other words, the bias goes to zero. As, like, As little as it goes to infinity. Why is it biased again? Well, because I can't take the expectation of ratio as a ratio of expectations. If I could. <coughs> Well, how would I calculate 
Remember, if I calculated the expectation of this, my first guess would be just, my first order correction would be just go ahead and put in mu sub y and mu sub x in place of y bar and x bar. But, so I have e sub y bar, e of tau sub y hat, in this case. Uh, maybe I should call this something else. I'm going to call this tau sub hat. Uh, he's going to call this something else. Let's call this tau hat. I'm going to call this the ratio estimate. So this is actually going to be a capital R here. Okay. And they use that notation in the book. So this, um, they don't use the tau hat is what they don't do. But this is close enough. So, oh yeah, well, no, there is T sub R, they call it. Actually, that's what they don't do. T sub R. Okay. On page 225. Okay? It's biased for tau sub y. I'm just unbiased for tau sub y. Okay? Actually, they, did they give this? I don't know if they use the tau hat ever in this book. They just call it capital T. Did they use a capital T in this book? They did? Well, yeah, there it is. Okay, so let's call this capital T then. Let's just give her the tau hat. Capital T, all right? This is, this is a broken system. Okay. They never put the tau hat, but that would be another notation. Okay, <laughs> if you have your choice for making the things. This is one. This is called a ratio estimator. It is biased for tau supply. Why is it biased? Let's see. E sub E sub T sub R. How would you calculate the expectation T sub R? By the method just had before. The first guess would be just plug in the population parameters. Then you have a correction. This is the expectation of some function G of X bar and Y bar, right? So it's a function of two random variables. This is a function of two random variables. Okay? And so this would be the first order approximation would be that this is simply G of mu sub x, mu sub y. But then I have plus some other terms, okay? Now, what is the g of mu x and mu y? This is equal to, then g is just tau x times uh, g of x and y is tau x constant times uh, y over x, okay? So this is just some constant, constant times y over x c times y over x. So I would actually compute this at mu x and mu y. I would just plug in mu x and mu y here. So I would get tau x times mu y over mu x. But tau x over mu x is just capital A. And mu y is mu y, so this comes out to be tau y. So the first plus dot dot dot, plus dot dot dot. So What's the dot dot dot? The other terms. Well, in the Taylor series, this is a this is the constant term in the Taylor series. Oh, you're estimating the Taylor series. Okay. Yeah, expectation of g of x and y. I don't get th this is not an equal. This is not equal to that. Okay. So expectation of a function of two random variables is not just the uh, function of the means. Expectation e to the x is not equal to e to the mu. Okay? All right? Ah. Okay? You can't just plug in the mean whenever you feel like it. Okay? In other words, you can't, you can't, you can't commute the, the uh, function and the expectation. Okay. Okay? All right. E of f of x is not f of e of x. Okay? Unless it's a linear function. Okay? All right. Oh, okay. I didn't do that. Okay. <laughs> but the first order term, the, I mean the zeroth order term, is the correct quantity. All right, and then there's the rest of the dot dot dot. Turns out is the bias. Okay, this is the bias. Okay, and then we can actually calculate how big the bias is using that method, uh, roughly speaking, from chapter four. Okay, I'm going to go over that just a little bit. Okay, because we have to come up with a formula for this bias. Okay. Let's see how big the bias is. Do you want 
do the methods and check before more in, like, in less than five minutes. Okay, so, <laughs> so that's it. Now there's yet a third, this is the one that he discusses in the theory of the chapter, okay? So this is an estimator that's got a little, little hitches and it's biased, okay? Now, it was curious that he left to the homework problem with another possible estimator, because the theory of it is easier, okay, that he left to you to do with the homework, okay? I don't know why he didn't just put it in the book, but he left it to the exercises, okay? So the other one that you might come up with is capital T sub D, all right? Equals, let's see, D sub uh, D it was, would be mu sub x plus, no, no, it would be tau sub x plus n y bar minus x bar. You would just take what? You would just take this the total this the total uh, book value of the inventory plus um, difference between an estimated difference between the audited value minus the book. So this is unbiased, and that's what you're supposed to show. This is unbiased. You will show that as part of your homework. Uh, it's it's trivial. Show it's, unbiased. it's trivial. It's a linear function of two variables. You say the expectation of it. You show that it's equal to tau y. Uh, y for tau y. So do you kind of show that e of y bar r is equal to zero? Is that how you show it's unbiased? No. Y bar r. Uh, that, um, y, e bar R, y bar R is where you put a mu x here, by the way. Mm -hmm. Y bar R is where you put these divided by capital N, mu x times y bar or x bar. Y bar R, in other words, basically mu x and x bar are the same, right? Mm -hmm. Roughly. So you get y bar. Okay? Yes, right. Roughly. That's what y bar R is. Okay? That's an alternative estimate for mu, but it's biased. It is biased. Because mu x and x bar aren't the same. Right. But why would this be better? He gives an argument why it might be better than y bar alone. Why would you take a bias estimator over an unbiased estimator? If the bias is in the right way. If the, well, no, the bias is still wrong, but it might be small, and the variance is small. In other words, there's the mean square error. The bias could be, well, in the right way, I don't know what you mean by that. Yeah, it's, it's a vague term. Okay. <laughs> but, Sounds good. Um, um, the bi if the bias is small, but the variance is in the right direction, then namely smaller. Okay, so how do I calculate, how do I compare estimators? An MSE of an estimator, estimator of theta. An estimator is a random variable, theta is a population parameter. How do I talk about the mean square error of an estimator of theta? That's where estimator theta hat, I'll call, of theta, so I'll use the parentheses, okay? That is simply the expectation of, you just figure out the distance, the average distance of theta hat to theta by, or square the distance by taking the difference between theta hat and theta squared and, and taking the expectation of that square. That's usually how you compare estimators. Now, how do you do this? This is all, this always comes out, of, and, and, and we've gone through this, this is the variance of theta hat plus e of theta hat minus theta, the quantity squared, plus the bias. So the variance of theta hat plus the bias, square of the bias. Okay? That we've done because what you do is you just subtract the correct mean from theta hat. Theta not, isn't necessarily the mean. Okay, this is something you're trying to estimate. You subtract the correct mean, which is theta naught, let's say, then you add the theta naught back in. Okay, and then you just expand this thing. Theta hat minus theta naught has mean zero. So when you expand this difference, there's different couple of ways of doing it, but this is, this is the most straightforward way. When you, when you expand this, this, this square, you have a constant here. You have a random variable with mean zero here, so the cross product term has mean zero. The first square term has mean, the uh, definition of variance is theta hat. The second term is the square of the bias, which is theta hat minus theta naught squared. This is theta naught minus theta naught squared. This is the theta 
not minus this theta not square. This e theta has theta not the way you set it up. Okay? Okay. So this is a more theoretical looking way of doing it. I'm glad there's a tape of this because I don't have to watch it twice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, uh, well, no, no, you've seen this before. We've actually written this down before. I'm just flashing the things very fast. If I do e theta hat minus theta squared, how would you do, how would you calculate that if somebody told you to do it? And they told you and you told you that e of theta hat is equal to theta naught. They told you that e of theta hat is theta naught and they asked you to calculate this. Let's do that on your final exam. Let's do that for your comprehensive exam and PhD or whatever. <laughs> okay. They said, here's what I want you to calculate where e theta naught is theta naught. E theta hat is theta naught, I'm sorry. So you have to find e of theta squared, so, uh, e theta squared minus the mean or theta naught. I think the best formula is that the expected value of this, the, the little known formula is that you take the shortcut formula for the variance and you put it on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. E of x squared is the variance of x plus, plus e of x squared, uh, e of x the quantity squared, right? That's the easiest formula to use. Yeah. That everybody forgets about the first course, okay? So I'm just gonna apply that directly. That's the easy way to do this. This is the e of, and that's what I want. That's an x squared, where x is theta hat minus theta, right? So that's the variance of theta hat minus theta, okay? Then you have to use your rules. Plus the expectation of theta hat minus theta quantity squared, all right? Mm -hmm. Now what I had written before, they only put the variance of theta hat. Was that legal? Say what? In the previous line that they just erased, I had the variance of theta hat mm -hmm. plus this. What's theta? Theta is just Theta is a parameter. Constant. A parameter. It's a constant. No. Oh, no variance. So it's just variance of theta hat. Yeah. And so then you get to erase this because it's a constant. All right? Yeah. So that's what I had written. And so what? So this is variance of theta hat plus theta naught minus theta quantity squared. So what you have to do is you have to come up with that formula. You have to be able to erase this theta naught, this theta, and you have to plug in theta naught for theta, e theta hat. Basically, do three things to come up with what I want. Okay, so but it's straightforward. Oh. Oh. Okay. So the trick is to unravel everything is to use it this this good thing. Okay. Okay. This will get you out of most jams. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When it comes to this guy, you just redo it every time. But. MSC is variance plus bias squared. That's the formula that if you really don't want to be derived, you memorize. Okay? Why? MSC is variance plus bias squared. Right. So, what I want to do is I want to compare y bar and y bar sub r, or t and t sub r, which is the same problem. Okay? It's just the this is n times that, okay, capital N. Just check it. Capital N is known. That's the rule of the game. So, I want to compare, compare um, the MSE of y bar and the MSE of y bar sub r. So, if one of them has zero bias, that's good. But what if it has a huge variance? What if this has a huge variance compared to that one? And this has a tiny bias compared to, you know, one that's pretty small. So here's the idea. The actual theory is that y bar sub r has bias of order 1 over n, okay, and standard error of order one over root n, that's always the way it is, okay? Standard, okay. So that means that the mean square error, which is the sum of the squares of these two things, is one over n plus order of one over n squared, so that's a smaller order. It's 
basically the bias doesn't ma matter when little n is very large. So therefore, if the standard error here, order one over root n, is less than the standard error of y bar, which is also order one over root n, but maybe you know twice as small. Okay. So then the MSV may be basically um, you know, one quarter as big as that one. And that's even though there's a bias. There's a bias which may make up for one percent of the MSV or something. So that's the idea of it. If you can, as long as you can find a, a smaller standard error for y bar than there is for y bar, then uh, if, as long as n isn't too small and the bias, you know, you don't get unlucky with the bias, roughly speaking, in analyzing the examples, then uh, you have a better estimator. And the improved standard error will come from the correlation of the yes. two? Yes. Improved standard error comes from the correlation because when y bar is too big, x bar will, since they're positively correlated, x bar will also be too big, then it's mean, used to x. And so y bar over x bar will be sort of stabilized. Okay? They either go up together or down together, roughly speaking. So y bar over x bar will stay near its actual mean. Okay? Even though it's, okay? That's the idea. Of course, it's true here as well. When y bar is too big, x bar will be big. Y bar minus x bar won't be a big difference. So the difference corresponds to a quotient. All right. Similar situation over here because it's a linear estimator of x bar and y bar. You actually get an unbiased estimator. So part of the problem 41 is to compare the variance of this one with the variance that is reported in the book for this one. Okay. And uh, actually, it might be a slightly wrong answer. The very last little tiny step that they do in this problem it seems to be there's a slight error in the book. Um, so I think that tau d is better for 741 part d. Tau d is better than, see if you come up with the answer that I did, then tr, if the mu audited over the new uh, book value is bigger than 1 and sigma A equals sigma B. So, um, or sigma A corresponds to, this should be the answer to. Uh, so they actually this difference one is better than the ratio one. If they do have the same variability, if the audited values and the book values are the same, here A stands for audited and B stands for book. So A stands for Y and B stands for X. Alright? A stands for the variable, and B stands for the auxiliary variable. Okay? If this is the little r, this is the actual ratio of the mean, it's called a little r. Okay? Not correlation. Correlation is going to be, population correlation is going to be rho, estimated population correlation is going to be rho hat. So no, some statistics books use little r for the estimated population correlation. I'm estimated correlation. This is a population correlation. So how is this ratio related to the correlation? I mean, it... It's not. It's not? No. When does this come into play? Because what you do is that it turns out that in the formula for these variances, the variance of T, capital T sub D, or, or Y sub D, uh -huh. And the variance of this one, okay, they come up with a covariance between x and y. See, x may be known and everything, but still, there's a sample covariance between x and y. Okay? I mean, there's a there's the covariance between x and y. So how variables. do you calculate covariance for a sample? You have to go back to the covariance. This is complicated. Oh, the covariance? Well, there's one theorem that they don't put in, and I put it in the notes, but... Uh, something under the rug, at least. <laughs> Maybe you didn't ask the right question yet. <laughs> well, isn't there anything I can sweep under the rug? We have 10 minutes. So, let's, I give you an introduction to this, this situation. Now, I'm going to have to sweep something. 
calculations for calculating the bias and the variance and all that stuff is right out of chapter four from one of the examples. That's the part that I'm going to make you go look under the rug above. Oh, the okay. estimate? Or... Okay, if you go to chapter 4.6, example C, expectation and variance of a ratio. They give you the answers that you need to calculate the expectation and the variance of capital TR or capital Y bar bar because it's exactly that situation. So let's read the answers out of the book. Page 166, way back 50 pages. Okay, page 166, variance, expectation of y, o, of y over x and variance of y over x. Okay? Or I'm just taking a random variable y and random variable x. And I'm going to apply with y bar and x bar. And here we're not assuming that x and y are independent. Okay? The expectation is about mu y over mu x plus a uh, term sigma squared sub x. I'm going to use the I'm going to use the little y, the little x, because that's what we have here. Sigma squared sub x mu y over mu sub x cubed minus, maybe I should put capital X here. Okay, that's so, very confusing. Minus this, sigma xy. I'm going to put it this way. I'm going to write it not in terms of the sigma squared. Variance of x is mu y over mu x cubed minus covariance between x and y over mu x squared. What's the difference between big x and little x? Big X is a random variable. Little x is a notation he's using for this is the population mean of the random variable capital X. Uh, okay. He just didn't want to put capital X as everywhere. He wanted to sort of make a lowercase thing. So X, I thought X was a given parameter from, from Capital X? Yeah. Capital X is a random variable always, period. Little x, the reason he put the mu sub x here, I'm interpreting this in terms of Your our current notation. Our current notation is mu sub x is summation little xi. I goes from 1 to capital N divided by capital N. Yeah, I know. That's why he puts a little x, because he puts a little x there. Right? So it's, he can call it mu 1, you know. But what's wrong with the sigma of small x? I didn't put that because I'm going to apply it with x bar in place of x. And then if you, it'll be confusing to put that in because sigma squared sub little x was the context for the variance of just the single random variable capital X. But if I put sigma squared sub x, then you'll think, oh, it's sigma squared sub x, but it's sigma squared sub x bar that I'm going to apply this to. Uh, okay. All right, so I'm going to be very careful. When it, and see, now I didn't have to worry about that because mu sub y bar is mu sub little y, okay? And mu sub x bar is mu sub little x, so I can cheat and put it this way, all right? But so you really have to read it the way, if you really want to read it the way he did, he puts the capital Y here and the capital X here. I'm going to replace capital Y by capital Y bar, but what's the mean of capital Y bar? It's mu sub little y because it's an unbiased estimator. So I'm going to write it this way. Because these guys aren't going to be affected when I replace the little x by x bar, all right? But this one and this one are going to be affected, okay? Okay. And then the variance of y bar is approximately, this is a different formula, okay? The variance of y over x bar is given in the for next formula. It's 1 over, again, I can get the cheat here or put the mu sub x squared, then I have the variance of x times uh, mu y over mu, mu y squared over mu x squared <sighs> plus the variance of y minus twice the covariance 
we should get right into two. Roll. Uh, I'm going to write this one. Minus twice the covariance between x bar and y. Uh, x and y. Again, I'm going to use the, the different notation. And he does times mu y over mu little y over mu little x. Now I can take these formulas and transcribe exactly by, by substituting formulas from chapter 7. So the variance of x, variance of y, and twice the variance of x and y, where I replaced x and y by x bar and y bar. So therefore, the variance of mu x, excuse me, uh, of the expectation of mu x, y bar over x bar. This is the, therefore, the expectation of y bar sub bar. I'm going to do the y bar sub bar. Expectation of this is the expectation of mu x times y bar or x bar. Is approximately equal to this formula here with x replaced by x bar, y replaced by y bar. Equals. And then since, again, since uh, I'd have to replace this little y by y bar too, okay, officially. But since the mean of y is equal to the mean of y bar, I, I, it stands as it is. This is the cheat that I was saying that I need to explain it. Okay, so this is mu x times mu y over mu x. What did you give the mu x? There's a factor here in the definition of the random. Oh. Y bar sub bar. Plus the variance of x bar times mu sub y over mu x cubed plus minus that is the covariance between x bar and y bar. That's the only one that's nasty, the covariance between x bar and y bar. He's got it recorded in the book though. Times uh, over mu x squared. Okay? So now I go to the book and I look up the the actual calculation of these in chapter seven where we have the theory for the variance of x bar and the covariance between x bar and y bar. The variance of x bar is right at the beginning, and we did that one. Okay. And it is on um, theorem B, page 208. So this is mu x. Well, now I can multiply the mu x through. Okay, let's multiply the mu x through. I get mu y. And then plus this bias term here. This is the approximate bias, because this is still an approximation. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's live with that, OK? Plus, then I get a mu y over mu x squared, because one of the mu x gets canceled, OK? Variance of x bar, which is uh, sigma squared over n times the final population variance, 1 minus n minus 1 over capital n minus 1. Mm -hmm. oh. Minus. Let's see, had a mu x squared over there, right? Page 166, make sure this is correct. Yeah. This one is, therefore, 1 over minus 1 over mu x. Cover, what is the covariance between x bar and y bar? That's on a different page, which is in this section on. He doesn't need it until he gets to section 7.4, so he waits till then to actually write it down. Variance between x bar and y, here it is, covariance on page 221. It's a very analogous formula. Minus sigma xy over n. It's exactly analogous. In fact, the formula for the variance of x bar follows from this one. So this is just, it was, okay. There it is. Page 221. So he just replaces the variance with covariance? Yeah. That's all he did. Isn't that nice? At least it's consistent. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the formula came out nice. You had to guess the formula? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that is it. This was sigma x squared, I guess. Okay? I'm going to put that in. Now, simplify that. Well, so then he's just saying, there's me y. That's what I wanted. And here's the spice. So then he's going to summarize and say what the approximate bias is. So therefore, the approximate bias is 
therefore bias is approximately this business. Then he can, he can, now what he's going to do is going to put the rho sigma x sigma y in there, I believe. And he's going to factor out something. Let's see, which, what am I going to take from my bias formula? Uh, bias, here it is. 1 over n, finite population correction, 1 minus little n minus 1 over capital n minus 1. We're going to have a 1 over mu x. Then what he's going to do, he only plucks out one of these 1 over mu x's. Okay, then you have a mu y over mu x left here. He's going to call that little r. Little r, sigma sub x squared. Okay? So you have a mu y over mu x squared here. Uh -huh. You can take one of the mu x's out to go with that one. Okay, this is all I'm interested in, this by term right here. Uh -huh. Okay? There's one over, the po finite population correction is common. There's a 1 over mu x common. Uh -huh. There's a 1 over n common. Uh -huh. Right? All that comes out. Okay? Yeah. Then the, the mu y over mu x is what you actually call the population ratio. Uh -huh. That's what's defined as the r. Oh, okay? okay? Little r. Then you have sigma x squared minus, then all you have left here is sigma x y, which is going to call rho. Sigma x, sigma y. Because that's the definition of the covariances. There's a it's just an identity for the covariance. Is always the correlation times the product of the standard deviations. Since sigma x, y equals rho, sigma x, sigma y, always. All right? Like we're out of time. OK, so there's your bias of order 1 over n. And then he also comes up with the variance. And then there's a formula for the variance. The variance of of this y bar small r. This was the, is by similar to something n. It's just the same problem. Okay, it's just more algebra to them. Okay, it comes out to be 1 over n, finite population correction, 1 over n minus 1 capital n minus 1. Then you have a different formula here. So it looks like, just like, that's how the variance of the y bar comes out, right? The variance of y bar comes here, then you have a sigma squared sub y. This one has sigma r squared, sigma squared sub x. Plus, there's your sigma squared sub y term. So it looks bigger there, but then you subtract something, which is 2r rho sigma x sigma y. Okay? So this could be smaller than sigma y squared, as long as this term, r squared sigma x squared minus 2r rho sigma x sigma y is less than 0. Then this, would, this has to be non negative. This will be non negative. But it could be less than sigma y squared. Okay? So then you have a smaller. Standard error for y bar r is n of order 1 over root n. When I take a square root here, I get 1 over root n for the standard error. Whereas the bias is of order 1 over. So bias squared would be 1 over n squared. Standard error squared would be 1 over n. Okay. And then you have, you're going to come up with a formula for the, uh, for the variance of this little guy. And it's going to still, again, that's going to be trivial because it's going to be variance of y plus the variance of x minus twice the covariance between x and y. You just looked up in the book on page 221 for what the variant covariance between x bar and y bar is. Oh. They have a formula for it. So all the formulas are in the book. So it's this formula is this, this one, right? Well, the covariance for Yeah, I mean, you know, when you actually calculate the variance of this, uh -huh. you're going to have to do a co covariance calculation, right? What's uh -huh. the variance of a difference? The variance of y bar minus x bar. They're not independent. Yeah. So it's variance of y bar plus variance of x bar minus twice the covariance between x bar and y bar. Here, I'm just subbing in it right here, right? I subbed in for this. I subbed in for this one. So it's the same type of process. Same type of process, you'll get yet another formula with the same kind of jump in here. Okay? Only instead of, so you have variance of y bar, which is 1 over n. I've recorded what I got so far. Uh, sigma y squared. The variance of y bar sub r is 1 over n times finite population correction times sigma. This is some, something else. This little r squared times sigma x squared plus sigma y squared minus 2r rho sigma x sigma 1. Okay. Now in practice, when you actually try to estimate this, you're going to pull, replace r by capital Y bar over capital X bar. You're just going to put everything in sample terms. You have mu y over mu x. Right? Mu y over mu x. 
with r is mu y over mu x, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna estimate it by capital R equals y bar over x bar. That's the estimate for little r. In fact, he goes through and he actually writes down the, the approximate bias and the approximate variance of capital R as well. It's separate to the separate theorems. This kind of trivial is the difference between y bar to bar and r is just a factor of mu sub x. Alright? I have y bar sub r, which is mu x times capital R. So just note that he's got this capital R theory going in there too. Okay? But when I actually want to calculate this standard, the standard error, which is a square, estimated standard error, it means I take the square root of this and then plug in parameters, okay? I can't plug in the parameters because I don't know. So I have to estimate. So I put S sub x squared, S sub y squared, row hat for row, and capital R for the little r. I just plug everything in like that. It's kind of an easy operation. Then you start calculating your calculator keys, you know? All right. Well, thanks for the extra time. Um, I think you'll be all right. Um, you may be a little confused at the very end of 41 and 43. Oh, but one last thing. Problem 49. The answers are the 48, so they didn't give you the answers to number 49. If you look at set problem 749, the actual answers you got in the back of the book, they're for 48. So if you want, so you want to understand 49, you can always do 48 first. Oh! <laughs> What's the assignment? That's me. What's the assignment? I gave it already. Did you get it? <laughs> Why is me? Um, okay, I'll give you the answers to 49 on the website later today. How's okay. that? How's that? Okay. Is probably the easiest one. It's just an algebra. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just algebra. So do a direct credit if you're an undergrad. Okay? Mm -hmm. Alright. I'll, I'll make an addendum to that website. So this is on that. Tuesday. Try to do it. You know, if it's just impossible, everybody said, look, I didn't even look at it, so I'm in that.